can take you anywhere Turn the pages and you'll be there Come on, join us, you'll see We're reading with Kevin Lee Hi, friends! Hi! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Happy holidays! All of yes. that! <laughs> Absolutely! Oh, today I am so glad to have a great author for you all to visit with. But before we get into that, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss any of the fantastic authors we have coming by every week. So today, and especially for today, I'm so glad it's Christmas Day and we are celebrating Christmas and being jolly and merry and we're with our families. And today we have Miss Lynn Susan Talbert for us. And she is going to read The Square Root of Possible. Now, I know, you know, many of our, many of our friends may know this story a little, but Miss Lynn Sisson Tower, she is going to get into it. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Carrie Lee. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm so excited to have you on. And I must say, you know, I have been a fan of your work. And, you know, our friends will know this book from the movie Jingle Jangle yes. that debuted last year on Netflix. And you are going to read um, sort of the sequel and jingle jangle the square root of possible so could you tell us where you are reading to us from today yes i'm reading to you from the lovely los angeles in the talbert home um <laughs> and uh here and so excited to share the stories with you well i am so excited to hear it and i know our friends are excited to hear um, the square root of possible as well. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let you get on with the story. All right. Well, here we go, everybody. We're reading the square root of possible illustrated by Tara Nicole Whitaker. And this book is dedicated to our son, Elias, David Talbert. Don't let anyone tell you it's too far to go. Know that you're unstoppable because the square root of what's possible is in you and loving you always, mommy and daddy. Here we go. Journey loved to make things. She liked to tinker, to engineer, to invent. When she was hard at work, puzzling her way from a pile of parts to a brand new creation, Journey saw things, beautiful things, formulas, equations, numbers, logic, Paths from here to there, from start to finish, from problem to solution. Journey saw things that shouldn't be possible. She made things that shouldn't be possible. But because Journey believed in them, they were. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing to see impossible things, to have extraordinary vision. But it can be lonely, too, when people don't see what you see. You get it from your grandfather, Journey's mom said with a funny smile. Journey had never met her grandfather. All she knew was his name is Geronicus Jangle. He lives far away and he was the greatest inventor of all time. He used to make the most marvelous toys and inventions, Journey's mom said. She always looked a little sad when she talked about her father, Geronicus, but proud too. Journey wanted to meet her grandfather. She wanted to meet someone who was like her, who saw things that she saw. She wanted to work side by side the great inventor, Geronicus Jangle. And so Journey set off to Cobbleton. But when Journey found her grandfather, there were no glowing formulas. There were no dancing numbers. There weren't even any tools or materials or notebooks filled with scribble notes. 
there was just a grouchy old man who didn't seem very happy to see Journey. This was a problem for sure, but Journey loved problems. Finding the solution was always so satisfying. Geronicus Jangle had lost his jingle and Journey was going to help him get it back. Journey's grouchy grandfather was poking at something interesting. It didn't look like it was going so well, so Journey decided to help. She scribbled a glowing formula into the air. Words, numbers, truth and magic, time, chance, belief. You can see that, her grandfather said. Can't you, asked Journey. Her grandfather looked glum. No, he said, not anymore. Mm -hmm. Journey stayed up late that night, thinking about the square root of possible. There was a variable missing from her grandfather's life. His crankiness had been multiplied by boredom, which was bad enough, but the long division of lonely, that was the real problem. What Geronicus Jangle was missing was fun. Fun would balance that equation. Fun canceled out bitterness. Fun subtracted sadness. In the morning, a fresh coat of snow blanketed Cobbleton. It was beautiful. And more than that, Journey happened to know what snow added up to. Journey knew just what she needed to do. Splat! Her snowball socked Geronicus right in the head. Journey giggled, bullseye! <laughs> For one terrible moment, Geronicus Jangle looked grouchier than ever. Come on, Journey thought. The square root of possible and the fourth snowball theorem dictates an equal and opposite reaction. So react! And then he began scribbling furiously in the snow. At first, symbols only glowed faintly, but as Journey's grandfather built a fearsome new formula, the letters and numbers began to burn in the air. Nobody but Journey and Geronicus could see them. Nobody but Journey and Geronicus believed in them, but that didn't mean they weren't real. They were the realest thing ever. Powered by pure math of mischief, the snowball whizzed through the crowd. It swerved around corners. It hopped over lampposts. Journey dodged and ducked, but this snowball had vision. Splat! Journey had never been so happy to get a face full of snow in her whole life. It was the most magnificent mathematical snowball fight Cobbleton had ever seen. And the best part of all of it was that her square root of possible theorem worked. Fun minus sad multiplied by mischief divided by love with the addition of affection added for good measure equals joy. And <laughs> But isn't that what Christmas is all about? You know, just being together and having fun. And, you know, Journey got to meet her grandfather and figure out exactly what it took to really be happy and merry and bright. Oh, yes you know, during the Christmas season. And I think that's, that really just brings us all, I think that's why a lot of people just love Christmas so much because it's just about being joyful, yes. you know? Yes. So I'm so glad that you were able to read, come and read this to us. So what was, you know, your inspiration behind writing The Square Root of Possible? So the movie itself was something that was just a 20 year passion for my husband, David and I, and with creating this original piece with everything, music and animation yeah. and period piece and all of that, we wanted that classic holiday piece that family could 
families could go back to year after year. And to me with that, it comes with the expansion of it all. It's books, it's toys, it's all of those things. And the first start of it are the books. And the song, The Square Root of Possible from the film was just so important to me and intricate yeah. in me getting through even making that film because it, it was not an easy task mm -hmm. and I'd be cranking the song in my car you know I'd be listening to it on set sometimes when I was having a tough moment and I just wanted people to also feel inspired by it and find their square root of possible be it if you're a young kid or be it you're an adult because yeah. we all need to find the magic in our lives. Oh, absolutely. I love that. And I must say that since my sons and I saw you, uh, we've watched that movie a couple, a couple more times. Oh, I'm glad. I felt like I got a new believer in one oh, of yes. your sons. Yes, you did. Yes. Like anytime he sees it flash up on, on the Netflix thing, you know, whenever um, we're not watching for a while and the, the, shows come on with the carousel and he sees it he's like can we watch it again so Aww. we've watched, it, we've watched it a couple more times since last year <laughs> i love it tell him thank you and i'm so glad it was so great talking to him and seeing his perspective and uh -huh. it, you know i understand how that is where sometimes people just you know kind of don't engage in the magic of it all so it was so yeah. nice to see him light up when we kept it it's like well you gotta believe you gotta believe exactly. to happen. and he just really got into it it was beautiful yes yeah young or old it's definitely a magical story and he's at that age where he's on the cusp you know <laughs> yes. but he, he's nine years old so yes. do you believe or don't you believe but he's still a believer <laughs> I love it I love yeah. it and so, um, you know, you've spoken about the movie Jingle Jangle and how it was to have this story come out of it. And we, I also have the next book, The Perfect Gift here yes. that we love so much. Thank so, you. you know, our, our friends, our audience definitely have to check out in the description how to go about um, getting The Perfect Gift and um, the Jingle Jangle book. and and the square root of possible, definitely. So with all of the books and all of the magic that you have created through Jingle Jangle, was there a book, you know, or books that inspired you when you were growing up? Yes. So books were big part of me growing up. My father used to give me a picture book every year for my birthday and okay. sign it to me. So picture books were just so inspirational to me and one that really stuck out are um, Dr. Seuss's Oh, the Places You'll Go and oh, yeah. also um, The Giving Tree The and, and all of the Silverstein books, you know, the short stories were so great and, and the rhymes and the different things that were going on, you know, where the sidewalk ends. And so there were several that really spoke to me, you know, many of the Ezra Knight books as well. I just love the characters and the pictures and the stories. And I still display them like today, you know, okay. on my coffee table or in my bathroom, like decoratively. Uh -huh. So um, reading was just such a huge part of, you know, building out my imagination and just having that time to myself to sit in my room and go through the pictures or read the stories. And then at the same time, reading with my family. Um, I'm a big audio book person as well. And that's okay. why I had the audio of the middle grade book, Jingle Jangle, The Invention of Geronicus Jangle. I had that done by Felicia Rashad. She reads yeah. that book. And as we were speaking about Square Root of Possible, you know, all of the books, as much as that song inspired me, if you pick up any of the books, if you upload your receipt to jinglejanglesong.com, you get the free download of the song Square Root of Possible. <laughs> so you can rock it in your car when you're having a moment and need exactly. some inspiration. <laughs> yes, that definitely is a song that just lifts the spirits. And, you know, what? One of the questions that I would want to um, have for you is, you know, creating such a magical world, 
you know, what was it for you to create a world where, you know, you had um, an African-American family just be on display for the Christmas season. That's, that's really one of the things that I had never seen growing up. And I'm yes. so glad that my boys have been able to see that. So yes. what was it for you to um, go through that? You, you make such a good point, Carrie Lee, because, you know, it was something that I wanted to see. I wanted to touch the little girl in me as well. My husband, you know, with our son, we have an eight-year-old and he's growing up with Miles Morales and Black Panther. So that representation is so important, but we never saw any of those classic pieces that were original and that were representative of us. And um. You know, my husband was so brilliant in, in bringing this story to life. And it was originally for the stage, which we'll mm -hmm. still be doing that as soon. Um, but we wanted to do the movie first. And it was about, you know, showing our kids that they can fly and they can be magical and they can yeah. be inventors and relating all those things about natural hair, having those natural hairstyles in there with the crown that's going on. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, these are things that I dealt with growing up, as I'm sure you did too, you know, yeah. our, the identity of our hair and, and what that meant, um, you know, not necessarily seeing us in this light. You know, it was important for us to not only feature you know, African-Americans in this beautiful way and really Black people in this beautiful way because there's some British in there as well yeah. and uh -huh. show that we are magical and we can be seen in this magical world. But at the same time, the themes are universal. Love, mm -hmm. hope, holiday, family. You know, yeah. uh, we want to show that we are all more alike than we are different, but that we should embrace and celebrate our differences at the same time. You know, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why I built this platform to be able to celebrate our differences, to show, you know, authors of every hue, yes. you know, and to let um, our friends know that there are books that are not just about one theme. You know, we are all, we all celebrate well, most of the world celebrates Christmas. Yes. Most of the world, you know, celebrates these big milestones. And we have these families that are different and, you know, just so great. And to have that movie, I, I'm, I'm telling you, when, when I um, saw it for the first time last year, that really just... It, it really just jumped out at me and I was glued to my seat because of course, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was watching a quality film with my children. So again, thank you Ms. Lynn, Sis and Talbert for joining us today and joining us with this magical book. And um, do you have any last words that you'd like to say to our friends? Oh, I just want to say thank you and wishing everyone a happy holiday. I'm so grateful that you all have watched Jingle Jangle and were inspired by it. And I hope you watch it again this year. Um, yeah. Another thing that was just so exciting was the fact that it was translated in 32 languages as well. And so you can even watch it in another language and maybe sing the songs in another language too, which is so fun. So just wishing you and everyone a really happy, healthy Jingle Jangle holiday. <laughs> Thank you so much. And friends, yeah, I guess we will see you next year. <laughs> and just have a happy holiday. Have a wonderful time with your friends and family. And remember to always grab a book and read. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.